Hi and welcome back to a new video. I'm not sure if you followed this, but Igor Slab recently posted a test of the new Apex Stealth Metal fans from Alpha Cool versus, for example, the Noctua NF12 A12, where he tested those fans on a 45 mm thick radiator and showed that the airflow of those fans were twice as high compared to the Noctua fan while being only half as loud. And that is amazing. That's why we want to test those new fans in today's video to find out if that's actually true, because if it is, that would be insane. I want to point out I'm not equipped with any kind of like real professional equipment to do any kind of fan testing when it comes to noise levels or like airflow and stuff. That's why we will just perform some, I would say, real world testing. So I ordered one of those EKPE radiators, which is also 45 millimeter thick, where we're going to test those fans. So we have those Alpha Cool Apex Stealth fans. We will look at them closer up in a second. But first of all, we have some comparison fans. I decided to buy some Montech metal fans. I'm not sure. They also call it metal fan, um, probably because of the surface on top. I never used them before. I just picked them because they look kind of similar and uh, thus interesting. Then we have the Arctic P12 Max, which I think is a well-known fan, performs quite well and is very cheap. And then here we have set Noctua NF812 fan for comparison. As test setup, I'm going to use this C790 platform with a 13900K. We will manually overclock this platform to always consume 250 watt. So the 250 watt will have to be dissipated through this radiator and we will measure the water temperature in comparison to the room temperature and then record the noise level of the fans. So that would be our metric. We will start the test with the cheapest one. Those are the Arctic P12 Max with about 8 euro 90 per piece. To make sure that the CPU is always drawing exactly the same power, I'm just going to limit it to 250 watt and that should lead to the very same result. And I'm using the mainboard fan control to get the fans as close as possible for the first test to 1000 RPM. I'm now running Cinebench R23 for 30 minutes. You can see in hardware info that we constantly supply the water system with a load of 250 watt. The pump speed is fixed at 2500 RPM in IQ and it also has a water temperature sensor which is currently reading close to 40 degrees Celsius. But I'm going to use this value for the measurement data. It is supplied with the temperature sensor that sits right in the water and then I will deduct the room temperature from this value. There is one issue running this at 1000 RPM. That's simply because it is very quiet. I think it's a very realistic value because my personal system is also running at around 1000 RP RPM because you can hardly hear it. But it also is pretty difficult for me to catch the noise level because that's basically the base noise level at this room. If you would measure at a realistic distance of like a meter, that's why I'm going to be very close with the noise level sensor with about 10 centimeters away from the fan. So yeah, it's probably not a standard measurement, but it's going to be the same for all the fans. So it should still be fair. And that's why I also decided to do a second measurement at 2000 RPM, which will be much louder, something you probably won't run in a daily system, but that should give us very accurate noise level readings. After 30 minutes, it's stable in temperature. And if I press on the right, you can see T1 minus T2, and we have a delta of 19.8 Kelvin. And yeah, it is really warm in my room. And repeating the same test again with a 2000 RPM. And at 2000 RPM, we have a delta of 11.1 Kelvin. Montech metal fan. Nothing is made of metal except for this like tiny frame around it. Not quite sure if this naming is a little bit misleading, but anyway, it is a cheap fan with about 9 euro 90. So that should be interesting. And at 1000 RPM, the Montech fans are 0.3 Kelvin better or lower. And at 2000 RPM, those Montech fans are at 10.2 Kelvin. Continuing with Be Quiet's Pure Wings 3, it's still one of the cheaper fans with 13 euro 90. The Be Quiet fans seem to be not that great on radiators because we see a delta of 20.5 Kelvin. And in this scenario with the high speed, we have 11.6 Kelvin difference. Continuing with Noctua's NFA12. It's a beautiful, high quality, nice looking fan, but also the most expensive in today's test with 32 euro 90. 
And at least according to Igor, the Apex fans should be twice as good as these. That's also why I'm going to test these first, because if you look at the ranking or the test order so far, we were basically going after the price and those are the most expensive fans in today's test. But yeah, I just want to have all the baseline numbers first before we look at the Alpha Cool fans. It's just impressive how well those Nocturne fans perform with only 18 Kelvin difference. With max RPM, we are looking at a delta of 10.6 Kelvin. Quick in-between conclusion. As expected, Noctua's NFA12 are delivering. We will first look at the results of 1000 RPM. And also as a reminder, we are measuring here with a distance of 10 centimeters. That means that all my results cannot be compared to other results and also not to my own results. Because even with the 2000 RPM results, I was measuring from my usual distance of 30 centimeters. So you cannot compare them with each other, but within the table they are comparable. With 1000 RPM, as we could see, Noctua is so far leading the chart with 18 Kelvin difference. So in this position, Noctua is not only performing the best, but it's also the quietest with 38.8 decibel. The Pure Wings 3 from Be Quiet is also quite silent, but is performing quite a bit worse. The Montec Metal 120 is a very interesting alternative. It's also quiet and only 1.5 Kelvin worse than Noctua, but as I said, quite a bit cheaper. At 2000 RPM, I was absolutely surprised by the Montech fan. It even beat the Noctua NFA12, but only with 0.4 Kelvin. And you also have to see that it's 5 decibel louder. And as a reminder, subjectively, 10 decibel mean that it's twice as loud. This means that you can clearly hear how much louder the Montech fan is. And at least me personally, I would rather have 0.4 Kelvin higher temps and have 5 decibel lower noise levels. And if you ask yourself the question, why is Montex fan maybe better than Noctua's fan? It's also slightly higher. You can see here, package is with 29 millimeters. So it's slightly higher that it has definitely an impact on the performance. So that's it, the Apex Stealth Metal Fan by Alpha Cool. And the main difference to those common fans is probably the way it's assembled. So what you can see here with chrome or like a white paint, black paint, and also some kind of a gold paint or like some coating, that is a metal piece. And this metal piece squeezes together the plastic piece that sits in the middle. And in between we have like a huge O-ring that is for decoupling. So that apparently makes this fan more silent than other fans. That should be quite interesting. I'm not sure how much this actually helps in the real world, but that's something I want to find out. Also, by the way, I'm sorry if I'm not speaking very clearly today. I'm not sure if you can even hear it at all, but uh, I had my tonsils removed two weeks ago, so I'm still suffering a bit from that. So yeah, sorry about that. Now you should be able to see it a little bit more clearly how the fan is built. And to be fully honest, I'm not sure how they assembled this because like those things right here and on the back, those are the metal pieces and they squeeze in together the, yeah, the plastic thing in the center. Not sure, because I cannot see any screws. Interesting design, not sure how they made this. And also the fan blade design is completely different compared to the other fans we tested. Because all the other usual fans, they have a blade that just ends here. Whereas on this fan you can see, you have basically an outer ring connecting all the fan blades. That is something you see a lot on like nowadays graphics cards, but it's not as common on normal case or like radiator fans, no matter how you want to call it. Also, um, if you look at the cable, it has the ability to daisy chain them basically. So if you want to hook them up next to each other on a radiator, you just have to connect one to your motherboard, for example, or fan controller, and then you can connect them with each other. There are also different types of screw included because it's like a countersunk head on the fan. So you have M3, M4 and also UNC type screw for all kind of radiators or cases. And also for case mounting you have nuts um, to mount it from the backside. Also a longer fan cable. Yeah, it's actually not as good as expected. Like by far not as good as expected. As you can see, it's 12.1 Kelvin difference. It's not what I expected to be fully honest. I also just decided to repeat the test just to make sure that it's accurate and you could always in my videos see the water temperature, not only the delta but also the water temperature itself, but it's exactly the same result again. Now back to the chart. With 1000 RPM, the Stealth Metal Fan by Alpha Cool is pretty much in the center of all the results which we could see today. 
we see a delta of 19.8 Kelvin from water temperature to ambient temperature. At the same time though, the stealth metal fan by Alpha Cool is extremely quiet with 38.9 decibel and on the same noise level as the Noctua NFA12. The surprise we see at 2000 RPM, at least in my test, and I also tested it twice, it is a delta of 12.1 Kelvin. This means it's at a last place in this test. I was totally surprised by that. On the other hand though, it was also the quietest fan in this scenario with 49.2 decibel. As one extra test, I decided to use this Noctua U12A to equip it with the stock fan that's an NFA12. And that's also the stock fan, so either the fan or the cooler could be optimized for each other. That's def definitely something to consider. And after testing with the stock fan, we will put the Alpha Cool Apex fan on it and then test again. You can see that's, well, now I'm talking again, but Obviously the noise recording is lower now than previously, even though this fan is now also running at 2000 RPM, it's the same NFA12, but um, the values from the previous radiator reading are not comparable simply because this is one fan. And in the other reading, we were testing two fans and two fans are obviously yeah, louder than a single fan. So that's, yeah, not as easy to compare. But now the NFA12 as first um, yeah, contestant with a 2000 RPM, we will check that and see what kind of temperature it reaches. I gave the system uh, 10 minutes uh, to heat up to reach a pretty much a steady state when it comes to temperatures. And now after one minute, I took the average P-core temperature across the P-cores, which will be our comparison value. I'm running a fixed core clock on a P-core, is also a fixed core voltage, which still results in about 250 watt power draw. And then you can see a fixed fan speed which is the max of 2000 RPM on the Noctua fan. And now I'm repeating the same test with the Alpha Cool fan. The Alpha Cool fan is definitely in the same noise level range. I also want to point out, I did not change anything when it comes to like microphone position, position of the cooler, anything. Obviously, I mean, the Sheik is now laying here in a different position. This is not the like most scientific uh, thing to do. Still, I tried to replicate it as well as possible, fan is exactly in the same position as again also running uh, 2000 RPM. So noise level wise, I would say they're pretty much identical and this is still a very, very quiet fan. Now we're getting to the problem. I did exactly the same thing twice. And as I said, my original plan was to get the average P-core temperature, but you can see we are hitting, yeah, package thermal throttling. CPU core clock is lower. We are not able to, yeah, maintain the 5.1 gigahertz. And that is because, as you can see, package power draw dropped. We previously, luckily, we checked this number as well. And with the Noctua fan, we had maybe like 245 to 250 watt. And now it's like 205 to 215. So we see a decrease of like 35 to 40 watt. And I want to highlight again, it's the same fan speed, same RPM, plus minus 10 RPM. So I set it as accurate as I can. But yeah, it's definitely performing quite a bit worse. It is a quiet fan. It is very good noise level. It's the same fan speed, but it's definitely performing quite a bit worse. So just confirms our findings from the radiator test. I just wanted to double check that I'm not publishing anything like nonsense. Um, but yeah, even on the air cooler, seems to be same thing, same result. It is a quiet fan, but it's definitely not as good as the Noctua one. So that is going to be a very interesting and also difficult conclusion. First of all, let's just talk about the fan first. The fan, if you just look at the results, is a very quiet fan. It has high quality, it feels nice, has a good design, I like how it looks, and the noise level is great. In both 1000 and 2000 RPM levels, the fan is very quiet. With 1000 RPM, I would say it performs average between all the fans we tested in 2000 RPM, not as good as some of the other fans, and it definitely did not beat the Noctua fan. That is my testing. Not a problem is, I'm also biased to a certain degree if I read a test like the one from Igor, where he says that this fan basically performs twice as good as this one in this scenario, and is like half as loud. So yeah, if, I going, if I'm going to test a product like this, it leads to disappointment for me which is, I'm just a human, right? I'm 
the same as you out there. If you are going to pre-order this fan based on Igor's result, then you might be disappointed from what you actually get. At least that's the situation I am in now. And I think that is a very difficult situation because if you just look at the results I have and the result he has, there is a drastic difference. I'm not saying that my result is right and his result is wrong. It's just two very different results. For me, just doing what I'm doing, I mean, I'm clamping fans to a radiator. I'm setting the fan speed in BIOS. I'm double checking the fan speed in Windows. I have two temperature sensors for the water temperature. I have one that goes directly into the water. That's 0.1 degrees Celsius accuracy. And then I have one from Alpha Cool, uh, from Aqua Computer that's sitting on the radiator that goes to the motherboard. So I'm also double checking the water temperature over hardware info on this side. So I'm basically double checking everything twice to make sure that I'm getting accurate results. And you could always in all my footage see the delta and also the actual water temperature. That was always visible in all the fans I was showing to you in today's video. So I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. But yeah, those are completely different results. And yeah, that could be a problem. Now imagine if you're a customer that pre-ordered the fan based on Igor's results and if it turns out that, that they are maybe wrong, not sure if that's the correct term, but if they're off, if the reality is different, maybe because this is the production version and he was testing a sample, it's definitely a difficult situation, should not be the case. I mean, he also rewarded the fans with rewards and uh, yeah, high recommendations. So I think further testing and is necessary. Not from my side, obviously, because we need different reviewers, maybe someone with more accurate yeah, equipment or just a lot more results. Maybe just 10 more people to test it in, in different scenarios and see how it turns out. For now, I think it is a good fan, it is a quiet fan, but it's not revolutionary. It's, it did not beat the Noctua fan in my test, so yeah. At least that's the data I have. It's disappointing considering what Igor showed. Let's see. Waiting for your comments, because difficult. Alright, thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye.